Yes, life's a trying business. We learn that in the cradle. We don't get enough attention and we protest. <laughs> Next thing we know, we're getting too much attention and we protest about that. The taller we grow, the more things we find to protest about. So that by the time our student days are here, we've become the hottest protesters of the lot. We're on the brink of responsible citizenship, brimful of ideals, and we shout them to the world. No sooner do we become responsible citizens than we find there's always something that somebody wants to protest about. Blood sports, for example. For every man hunting a fox, there's another hunting the fox hunter. But whatever side you're on, be careful how much hullabaloo you kick up about it. This is Mr. John Connell of the Noise Abatement Society. He protests against noise, and he uses these meters to measure the din we make. His machines are so sensitive that they shudder at the mere drop of a pin. His biggest crusade has been against aircraft noise, especially jets. The anti-noise protesters have a lot of supporters around Stanwell, for it's right on the perimeter of London Airport. They sent deputations to rouse the aviation minister and the chairman of BEA out of their beds, and now they're protesting some more. Noise, says Mr. Connell, shortens our lives by years. We can't hear ourselves speak. Please. I've got our friends here next to me, Lord Douglas of BEA, the powers that be declined to attend this meeting, so they hoisted balloons in their place. We have Swiss Air and SAS, who are the other people coming on to use jets uh, to ruin your night's sleep. just as we are doing with this balloon here. And by the way, a memo for the Minister of Transport. Stand by for a rocket from another airport area, Northolt, where there's a different kind of row brewing. They're protesting about the new road building program because it'll bring a whole new flood of traffic through their communities. But for all the voices of organized protest, there are others thousands of them who carry the fight on all on their own. James Tynan is just one of them, a silent protester, but a protester with staying power. For years now, he's been picketing the offices of the Registrar General at Somerset House in London. And there's a householder, also a believer in the printed word, carrying on a lone war from North London against the council. He's festooned his house with reproaches. And whether you understand what they're all about or not, it's quite clear he's annoyed about something. And here we come to the most seasoned protesters of all. The place is Speaker's Corner in Hyde Park, London, on a Sunday morning. In their various ways, these ladies and gentlemen are exercising the healthiest organs of a democracy. It's lungs. The policeman doesn't need to raise his voice to keep things orderly. It's a sound to blow the needle off any noise meter. Because there are not only the protesters, there are the counter-protesters. Not to mention those who don't agree with either. Women, I'll tell you the truth about women. They're the most... I say it's a scandal. Why do we stand for it? Mark my words, this country is going to the dogs. When I tell you that 30 years ago... People protest because the road to Utopia is a long road. It's a road lined with this, the daily slaughter on our highways. Any world in which so much of this is seen is a very imperfect world. And John Creasy, the thriller writer, wants a national day of mourning to bring home to everybody the toll of the roads. From Salisbury, he too is organising his protest by petition. We, the undersigned, being citizens of Great Britain, 
are appalled by the fact that 140 of our fellow citizens are killed on the roads of the nation each week, and some 3,000 are seriously injured. We humbly petition Her Majesty's Government to take immediate steps to deal with this recurring disaster, as they would any other form of national disaster. This is the destination of all such petitions, and the bigger they are, the more attention they will demand, for all those signatures are votes, and a government ignores those at its peril. Today, when we march in protest, we do it peacefully. It hasn't always been so in Britain. But we've thrown away the weapons of rebellion and civil strife, which people elsewhere sometimes still find necessary to express their grievances. And it's not as if today's issues are any tamer. The H-bomb, for instance, with its menace of a violent end to all human life. Yet, in spite of all the passions it arouses, demonstrations like this have been remarkable for their discipline. These marches on London from Aldermaston are concerned with the biggest issue in the world today. Whatever the pros and cons of banning the hydrogen bomb may be, theirs is a protest which has brought together people from widely different spheres. Students and teachers, workers and bosses, the artists and the artless, wise heads and eggheads, walking the same road. They may regard themselves as forerunners of what is to come, the uniting of humanity itself. But in the meantime, humanity itself is divided about the safest way to get there. These voices will have to fill more of Britain than Trafalgar Square to change a country's mind. But once again, they're emphasizing the right of people to protest, to make themselves heard, whether other people listen to them or not. Thank <laughs> you.